All right, hey, this is Ryan again. I forgot that in the last video, I said I was gonna show you how to use AutoPad as an audio unit on your iOS device. And audio units, if you don't know, is basically a version of the app that runs inside of another app. And that app is called a host app. And what you're seeing here is the host app called AUM. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to load our instruments on different channels, even multiple instances of them, and kind of use them all together in some kind of live set. So, you know, it's kind of like a DAW, except, you know, AUM doesn't provide recording features. It's more focused for live use. So I really like using AUM. Uh, but there's a lot of other host apps out there, uh, some of them that are more like DAWs and some of them that are less like DAWs. But uh, I just want to show you how to load up AutoPad inside of AUM. And what we just do is hit the plus and then we hit on audio. We're going to add an audio unit extension. And if we scroll down to audio symmetric, we can load up AutoPad. And if we tap on it, we see that we get AutoPad's window and it behaves very similarly to the standalone app. A couple differences will be that we can't import sounds and we can't view the store from the audio unit. But our same favorites will be here. Um, our same MIDI actions will be here as well. Any settings that we have saved in the standalone will you know, be applied to the audio unit as well. We have MIDI actions. One difference is that we can't use MIDI learn in the audio unit at this time. I might get that implemented down the road, but they just behave a little bit differently. And I didn't get around to doing it for this, for this version. What else is different? We have set list mode. We can't airdrop from the audio unit. Um, but one thing that's cool is that when you're using an audio unit, you get some MIDI mapping essentially for free. And if I tap on these faders up at the top of AutoPad's window, I can see that some of these parameters are exposed here. You know, crossfade, low pass, high pass. They're exposed to the host app, and then you can actually create those mappings and modulations like separately from audio, AutoPad's own MIDI actions menu. So you have a lot of control over how AutoPad is going to work there. We can set up our MIDI input using this little um, curved arrow symbol. We can use keyboard or any kind of MIDI device that we connect. We can even now in AutoPad 1.9 uh, save presets that you know AutoPad will recall a specific sound for us or specific filter settings by using these presets. And let's just see if I use this analog sign one. This looks like one I created during testing. I can see that when I load that preset, I actually have the analog sign sound loaded in now. So I encourage you, if you're an audio unit user, to check out those features. Uh, presets, it's going to make it, I think, a lot more powerful for you now. But yeah, if you have questions about using AutoPad as an audio unit, make sure and leave me a comment or just kind of check out YouTube for what other people are doing. They're really powerful and uh, I'm excited to see more people using iOS devices in their keyboard rigs and um, I'm inspired that AutoPad is, is a part of that for some people. So Thanks for watching. Let me know uh, what you think, how you're using AutoPad. It's really inspiring for me to see and hear from people around the world that are using AutoPad. So thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.